Okay, we're going to be looking on page word 92 and 93, and this is going to be all about inserting a table. And adding a table to a document is a useful way to illustrate the information that is intended for quick reference and analysis. A table is a grid of columns and rows of cells that you fill with either text or graphics. A cell is the box formed by the intersection of a column and a row. The lines that divide the columns and rows of a table uh, help you to see the grid-like structure of a table and they're called the borders. A simple way to insert a table into a document is to use the insert table command on the insert tab and uh, there's a different way that you can make it a little bit more specific or to change some things on that tab as well. This command allows you to determine the dimensions and the format of a table before it is inserted. So if we take a look now at page or step one on page 92, it tells us that from the home tab, we want to click on the show hide button in our paragraph group. And then we want to scroll down until the heading featured tour details is at the top of our document. And that is going to be in on page three. So we scroll down and there is the featured tour details. That's where we want to see uh, at the top of our uh, screen here. On step two, it tells us that we want to place the insertion point before the heading featured tour details. Next, we want to click on the page layout tab. Then we want to click on the breaks button in the page setup group. And we want to click on continuous. So we're adding a continuous section break it is now going to be inserted before the heading. Now the document you will now see has, should have uh, six total sections, which we are now in the fifth section. There's another section down here, which is our sixth section. Step three tells us on there that we are going to click on the columns button in the page setup group. And we're going to click on one. So on this section, we're just going to have one column. Step four tells us we're going to place the insertion point before the second paragraph mark below the heading. So here's the first one, and there's the second one. So your insertion point needs to be below or right to the left of this paragraph mark. Once it's there, we need to go ahead and click on the Insert tab. And then this is where we're going to go to the Tables group, which only has the Tables button here, and we're going to click on that button. Now, this is where we can quickly add a table here just by moving our mouse pointer over here this. When you have these desired uh, number of rows and columns, you can click on it. However, we're going to click on Insert Table down here, and this is going to bring up the Insert Table dialog box. And you use this dialog box to create a blank table with a set number of columns and rows and to choose an option for sizing the width of the columns in the table. Now, the way I like to remember the difference between columns and rows is, is that columns are straight up and down. There are vertical uh, information that we're looking at that's straight up and down. I always said that the columns hold up the roof of the Parthenon on there. So if you can imagine Roman columns holding up a roof to a building, that's how I remember columns are straight up and down. While the rows out there, I always think about farmers and their you know, has really long rows, and usually those go from left to right, or those are our diagonal, uh, not diagonal, but uh, those are our horizontal uh, lines that's on there. Now once we have this, uh, we're going to take a look now on step five, and it tells us that we're going to type four in the number of columns text box, which should have the insertion point there, so we're just going to type in four there. We're going to press our tab key, and for the number of rows, we want six, because we're going to type six in the number of rows text box. Now, we're going to make sure that the fixed column width option button is selected right here, and we're going to click on OK. Now, notice that we have six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have four columns, one, two, three, and four. And this is a blank table. Uh, that we've just created on there. And the insertion point is now in the upper left cell of the table. And this is a cell. Each, you know, this little box right here is called a cell. 
Now when the insertion point uh, is in a table, you'll notice that the table tools uh, with a couple different, the design tab will open up, but there's also a layout tab there as well. Once we have that, we're going to go ahead and move on to step six, and it tells us that we're going to type in tour. So when you type, you just go ahead and type into that first uh, cell there. Of course, if you're looking to delete a table, if you made a mistake here and you want to delete a table, uh, you want to click in the table, and then you can click on the table tools in the layout tab and click on the delete button and the rows and columns group and click on delete table and that will remove your table for you. Of course, going back to step six, we typed in tour in the first cell and to navigate through this, we can hit our tab key and that's gonna move us to the second cell that's directly to the right. Then it will kind of go like a typewriter. It will go all the way to the end of the first row and then it'll go down to the second row. Here, we're going to type in season, hit our tab key, type in length, press our tab key, and we're going to type in cost, then press our tab key again. Of course, pressing tab moves the insertion point to the next cell in the same row, and at the end of the row, pressing tab moves the insertion point to the first cell in the next row. You can also click in a cell to move the insertion point to it. Next, if you look in on page Word 93 on figure D15, that's the text that you need to type in there. Um, just remember to press your tab to move from cell to cell. So if we take a look here, uh, I'll show you this first line and then we'll uh, pause the video temporarily. Like, uh, then you can type in the rest of the information and you'll be able to see the new text after we resume the video. So here we do want to type in to this one here, the Guatemala arts and culture. Now notice that instead of, uh, you know, that's why we use the fixed width uh, columns on there because notice that when we hit down to culture here, it didn't push this box outward, it made us a new line in the same cell. Of course for the season we want October to June. For the length, that's going to be 12 days and for the cost, $2,800. Then press your tab key and that's going to move you down to the next cell. So uh, I'm going to jump to the, uh, I'm going to complete this up and, and then we'll jump to the next step here, uh, here momentarily. So prepare for some magic to happen. Okay, and instantaneously, you know, right here, I told you some magic was going to happen. And now the table is completely filled out. Like I said, take a look once again on page uh, Word 93 on figure D15, and that's the information of what should be in your table. And this is what it should look like after you finish typing that information. Now, if you press tabbed after the last row, you may notice that a new column is going to appear on the next page. If that happens, just remember, always use your undo button to undo the last action. Now on step eight, we're going to click on the Table Tools Layout tab. So we're going to go up here to our ribbon, and we're going to click on this Layout tab here. Next, we're going to click on the Auto Fit button in the Cell Size group. So here's our Cell Size group right here. It's in the middle. We're going to click on the Auto Fit. Now we have Auto Fit Contents, Auto Fit Window, and Fixed Column Width. Currently we are on a Fixed Column Width, but what we're going to do is we're going to Auto Fit to the contents. Now you'll notice that this makes the table shrink up. Uh, it fits in, it just uses as much space as it needs to put in all the information. However, we're going to click on that button again, the auto fit button, and on this time we're going to click on auto fit window. Now you'll notice that the width of the table columns have been adjusted first of all to fit the text, and then when we clicked on it again to fit the window, it now fits the window from margin to margin. Now you can modify the structure of a table using the commands on the Table Tools Layout tab. And of course to edit the text in the table, all you simply have to do is place your insertion point in a cell and then start typing. Step 9 tells us that we're going to click back on the Table Tools Design tab. So we're going to go back up here to our ribbon, underneath Table Tools, this yellow section right here, and we're going to click on the Design tab. When we click on the Design tab, 
you'll now notice that we have all these different table styles. And if I point my mouse pointer through these, you'll notice that there's a live preview. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on the more button down here and notice that there's lots of different options on there. And of course you can scroll through the different ones to kind of get an idea for them. But the ultimate one we want to click on is going to be the light list accent two style. And then uh, on there we're going to make some changes to that. So if we take a look here and to ultimately see the name of it on there and most of these are going to kind of follow a similar naming pattern. So like right here that's medium grid one, medium grid accent one. So if you look across the main ones are on the top and we are looking for on here the light list. Color for shading, there's dark list, light grid, light list. So this is the column we want to use. Now if we go down there is the light list accent one and here's the light list accent two. That's the one we want to choose. You'll now notice that the table has been formatted. It's a different color now. Now what we want to do since we have the design tab here we want to change this over here on the table style options. We're going to click on the first column on there because if you notice the first column is bold but we don't want that to be on there like that. So if we click on the clear, uh, we're going to clear this checkbox here for first column and that is going to make sure that the first column is no different than the rest of the information. Now of course the table styles that we've been looking at includes the format settings for the text, borders, and shading for a table. Next we're going to click back on our view tab here and we're going to take a look at this in two pages. And now you'll notice that there's some quick reference information in our table and we should still have four pages. After that make sure that you save your document and you're ready to move on to the final uh, page uh, in the final video and that's going to be about inserting in clip art. So you can now move on to the next video.